these last few chapters has been the most intense shit ever in Painter of the Nine. In chapter 73, yeah. Sungho freaking killed the kid. <laughs> the D was too good that Nayeon passed out. Oh lord. I need to take a good long nap after chapter 73 because I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who was sensitive as hell. <laughs> the D put Nayum to sleep. Can you think about that for a second? And who thought that Nayum is so damn flexible? Girl, the way that he passed out, I just can't. <laughs> But man, this happy chapters is so suspicious to me because even though I really don't want this flop piece to end, we all know that this story really needs to move forward. And it's so suspicious as hell that we all know that the drama is about to come. But man, I'm so ready to hear the mother freaking backstories already because I have so many theories and it's freaking killing me because I know only Byunduk can give me my answers <laughs> but before we get started I just want to remind our viewers that if you like seeing more yaoi content and would like to support this channel please don't forget to smash that like button also if you haven't done so please subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell Feel free to message me in my social media at Sealed Fujoshi, which I'll be using to interact with viewers about more Yaoi content. If that's something that interests you, feel free to follow me at Sealed Fujoshi. Finally, this episode will contain explicit content and a lot of manual spoilers. With that in mind, please proceed with caution. You have been warned. Now, without further ado, Let's jump to a little bit of chapter 73 and a whole lot of chapter 74 of Painter of the Night. So anyway, chapter 74. Oh my god. <laughs> this whole chapter is just an introduction of how Nayeon is seriously starting to fall in love with Lord Sungha. I mean, come on, look at that smile. Look at Sungha's freaking smile. I'm melting and you have no idea how many screenshots I aggressively took in this chapter alone. <laughs> but man, let's start off with the very beginning of this chapter. What did this dream mean? Was it a memory? Was it a nightmare? Or is it a little bit of both? So let's break down these panels. At the start of this chapter we will see a very young Songha, probably in his teenage years aggressively begging someone to open a door he calls out to his father he calls out to his manservant mr kim to somebody at least open the door right and when he failed to ask someone for help we are shown that he is locked up in some sort of a study room and the reason I call this a study room is because there's a small table there that ap appears to have a notepad, a little brush with an ink, and there's a candlelight for studying at night that used to be off and then it suddenly lights up on the next panel. A little bit weird, but okay. Sohan notices that the dark room turns from black to bright and anyone who's on the right mind would turn their head back and in Sohan's case, he noticed that he's in a completely different room because the study room is gone and all he sees is this big wall divider I looked at this divider really closely and I don't really see anything special on this divider besides the painting of a mountain or some sort of nature 
on this divider it is on black and white but then again they don't have color printers back then so <laughs> but yeah it's on black and white um and then out of nowhere somebody grabs the young Songha. And then after one hand appeared, a bunch of other hands comes out. And they just started manhandling our baby Songha. But before we get further to the narration, I want to answer my first question. Whether this scene is a memory or a nightmare. And I personally think it's a little bit of both. Because... Um, this is probably an indicator that at this stage of Songha's life, this is where all of Songha's trauma started. Because in the previous chapter with the doctor, the doctor did say that Songha was a very bright and promising young lord. And then out of nowhere he changed and this might be the start of that story um there is two things that i can think of that might have happened in this um scene one and i think this is a lot of everyone's guesses that this is an indicator that this is how Songha's father tried to cure his gayness. It might not make sense to others, but maybe this is some sort of a scare tactic to scare the gayness out of Songha. Like that would ever work, but okay. Um, but yeah, this could have been one of the father's way of curing his so-called gayness sickness and this could also involve lord song maybe this is how song ha met lord song that traumatized song ha for the rest of his life resulting to the yeah. sex deviant that he is now and, um, you know, I think that when Songha's backstory is introduced in this series, I think that we're gonna have, we're gonna start feeling bad for Songha. Probably a little bit of a tearjerker because it looks like it's, something no kid should go through ever in their life regardless whether this is in ancient times or now i don't think any kid should go through what songha went through but it is what it is right now and you know this is byunduk's way of answering all the fans questions of anyone who's asking for the continuation of the backstory of Sangha, this is it. Byunduk is finally giving us little bits of puzzles to work with. And, you know, even though we all know that Sangha had a messed up childhood, and we all know that he probably went through so much trauma when he was a kid. But I think Byunduk is really going to make a whole 360 on how we are how we used to feel about Songha. Now that we have a Songha that is more loving to Nayam, I think we are slowly gonna forget the asshole Songha that we used to see before and when his backstory is introduced I think most of the haters out there are 
gonna forget why they hated him in the first place but <laughs> but yeah like i think that Songho, when he was a kid, wasn't only physically abused, he was also emotionally abused. And comes to worse, he was probably molested, raped, or harassed when he was a kid. And I think a lot of people will start feeling bad for him. Um, the if that is the reality, that would absolutely make sense why Sung Ha told In Hun in the very first season that he hates becoming or he doesn't want to be a government official because he hates being sur surrounded by white bearded old men because he probably was molested by government officials or old men when he was a kid um the room that is shown in this chapter doesn't look like a normal house or a kisang house this looks like um a really high quality place meaning it must have been a den for government officials or high ranking people at this era anyway i'm getting sidetracked back to the story we are brought back to the end of chapter 73 after the whole nightmare scenario where we see a current Songha waking up from his so-called nightmare and basing from what's going on in the next couple of chapters I think that this is right after their sex marathon in chapter 73 because okay it Songha went to another room to drink yeah. after his sex capade with <laughs> I am and he probably didn't want to bother the resting I am because you know boy flopped on chapter 73 but anyway he probably wanted to have a little bit of a drink and then he dozed off and then he had that nightmare that we saw at the beginning of this chapter 74 and then he walks back to the room where he left Nayam. In this room, we see a sleeping beauty as asleep after the backflip from chapter 73. <laughs> um, and there's obviously the blue robe on the floor that they used in chapter 72 and 73. And um, you'll see that Nayam is still naked in this shot and has some visible bruising probably from that sexcapade that they did <laughs> indicating that this panel in chapter 74 is the continuation of chapter 73 so anyway um this scene is probably one of the most heartwarming scenes or probably one of the very first heartwarming scenes that we will see in Panther of the Night because it is so freaking beautiful when Songha just decided to lay beside Nayam while Nayam was soundly asleep and you know while Songha is laying beside Nayeon. He has a flashback, and this answers one of my questions from the previous episodes in this podcast, where we were wondering whether Songha heard what Hena said to Nayeon. And in this chapter, we get that answer. 
Song He is fully aware of what Hana said about him that Hana doesn't want Song He to end up with Nahyeom because you know Hana thinks that Song He will only bring Nahyeom miss fortune or a lot of hardships so this scene ends with Sung Ho thinking deeply and probably repenting on everything he did to Nayeom and probably thinking of how he's gonna make up for all of the crap that he put Nayeom through and then you know the next that's the end of that panel this is the next panel where it is clearly still in the same season through this whole kidnapping arc because you'll see that it's still winter there's still snow in the ground because there's people cleaning up the the stalls outside and we are shown that Nayam is visiting the doctor again um, he's getting his hand checked and the doctor seems to be curious if there's any changes in the Yoon household which caught Nayam off guard a little bit but when Nayam asked the doctor doesn't pursue the question and you know Nayam just left the doctor only to be greeted by a very handsome Sungha waiting for him to get done with his doctor's visit um, one of our frequent painter of the night listeners, Heaven's Night, pointed out that Naim's scar scarf in this scene, the start of this scene, is the leg regular way that Naim ties his scarf, which is just, you know, it's the U shape where you just pull the other end of your scarf. But on the next panel, after the sung panel the style of the scarf tie design has changed to the way that sung yeah. did it in a previous chapter meaning there is a scene in between um Nayam getting out of the doctor's office and the next scene where you know Nayam's tie this scarf design is different the way that sung does it so there is a scene where sung was being a good boyfriend making sure that the cute little nayam is warm and cozy in his scarf anyway we are then introduced to nayam's inner thoughts while nayam is following sung probably they're heading home Anyway, in Nayam's inner thoughts, we are informed that Songho has changed a lot ever since the kidnapping incident. He is more well behaved, he doesn't tra talk trash anymore, and doesn't treat Nayam like a whore because apparently they don't spend their nights together anymore. But don't get it wrong because it's not that Sungha is ignoring Nayeom because Nayeom said they are still eating every single meal together including snacks so it seems like our Sungha is being very respectful of Nayeom from now on but then again, he's introducing some bad habits to Nayam, such as smoking. But let's focus on the good stuff. Sungha is being respectful, guys. But back to Nayam's thoughts. Sungha doesn't touch Nayam anymore. But he has developed a new stalker behavior of staring at a sleeping Nayam at night. It is sweet, but it's also kind of stockish, possessive move from Sung Ho. But, you know, it's still better than seeing Nayam being forced all the time. 
But man, when Naim said that sometimes Songho would steal a kiss from him at night rather than forcing him to bed, this is this hit me in a different way because he doesn't want to force Naim anymore. That he is willing to. He's willing to just accept a kiss from Naim. I don't know why he doesn't do this at daytime. I don't know why he does this at nighttime when Naim is supposed to be asleep, but he's not really asleep. But um, but yeah, it's it's melting my heart that this is Sangha's sweet side, and it's so nice to see it. Anyway. Um, don't forget that all these flashbacks is happening while Nayeon is walking with Sungha after the doctor's visit. So when Sungha noticed that Nayeon seems to be dozing off, Sungha pulls him back to reality by placing this cute hat that if you've been following um, Byunduk's um, social media, Byunduk has already teased this photo last winter, where I think it is the winter collections. If you check on Byunduk's page, you'll see that that hat with Sungha's current clothes has been teased last year already. So it's nice to see that this is complete seriously happening that in that photo from the winter collection um it was a sweet scene where Nayam was smiling happily and Sungha was smiling very handsomely and they were genuinely happy so it's nice to see that scene playing off in this chapter but I don't know if we actually will see that scene but this is where that winter collection photo is set. So that's kind of fun to think about. And um, after that cute little, you know, Easter egg, we are introduced, or maybe we already know this person, but anyway, there is a person lurking in the shadows again. And it might be another B who is trying to ruin Nayeon and Sungha's relationship. What I mean by that is it might be a character that is not introduced in this series. Um, but has been teased in this series. Meaning it could be the old master Yoon. But that's kind of impossible because master Yoon is sick in his bed so it's kind of weird that he would be walking around outside it could also be the well talked about lord song that uh, jiwa used to get Songha's attention before but um you know, it could also be a part of the Min gang starting their evil plot as we still don't know what is Min's plot with Jiwa. And if Jiwa is involved, it means no name is involved. And from the color of this man's robe, this is very similar to the clothes that no name wears. So this could also be no name. So this man that's lurking might be part of the lord min gang <laughs> anyway let me know what your thoughts are please comment in the comment section below and let's see what everyone thinks about this mystery lurker we have another mystery lurker a couple of chapters ago too at the kisang house when henna went home and we still don't have an answer to that one so this too might be related but again different colors include so it might be two different people we don't know 
but I'm pretty sure Byondok will enlighten us soon now that we are finally getting the backstory that everyone is begging Byondok to do and you guys better be prepared because she's gonna bring the waterworks I'm pretty sure the way that Byondok has been trolling us all this time I'm pretty sure that somehow backstory that you guys were all asking for it's gonna be a big tearjerker anyway i hope you enjoyed today's episode please don't forget to follow my social media to be teased about some of the boys love that i'm interested in feel free to leave me a message and converse with me in my discord channel i'd love to hear back from you and please consider supporting the show by donating as little as 99 cents yes you heard me right as little as 99 cents through www.sealedfujoshi that x y z also don't forget to support this amazing author Byunduk. all her manhwa details can be found in the description below again thank you so much and hope to see you next time